let's start. Um, many of you have been asked several times over in classes in high school and possibly even junior high to write arguments, argumentative or persuasive papers. However, I found that most curricula in English and social studies do not actually teach logic. So if you want to mount some sort of argument, then it's best to actually know some sort of logical model in which to structure that argument. If you don't know logic, then you'll make logical fallacies, or at the very least, you'll kind of lose your way and not be sure what you should be arguing. So today, what I'm going to do is teach you a very simple and very useful uh, model of logic for you to use to structure your argument. And it starts with that statement that you gave me, the claim. So if you have your claim, in brain, great. Um, then uh, keep that in mind and possibly write it on your paper because that's the statement you start with. You need that statement um, kind of right in front of you in order to proceed. This model of logic is called the Toulmin model and it's named after a logician named uh, Toulmin. I can't remember his first name and uh, actually died just uh, recently. Um, let me show it to you talk about its qualities. This is a typical Toulmin model. It's what we might call a, a syllogism. Anybody ever hear that term? Familiar with it? Know what a syllogism is? Blankness. Anybody ever heard the term? Further blankness. A syllogism is a three sentence argument. If you go to college and you take an introduction to philosophy or an introduction to logic course, which is a very common humanities course for non-humanities majors to take, you will talk about all sorts of different types of syllogisms. This is a three-line argument. Your claim is the first line. If constructed properly, according to the rules that we talked about yesterday, your claim is fine, does not require any sort of tooling or revision. So I've got an example up here. And I'll work through the example to demonstrate the model. The United States federal government should illegalize smoking. Of course, I have a responsible party, so it is nicely specific. I include the word should, so it is opinion based. I have not included the word not or never, so I am affirmative. Uh, let's see, what else do I know? Uh, controversial, certainly. Because while most people oppose smoking, people divide themselves when it comes to legislation against smoking. Is it arguable? Absolutely, you could research on both sides and argue this case either pro or con. So my argument claim works just fine. In order to prove this, and that's what logic does, it m doesn't merely, do you remember the term I gave you? A statement without proof? Thank you. It's not a mere assertion. You cannot simply rest upon an assertion. If you say, the United States government should illegalize smoking, and I ask you why, I press you on that, and you say, well, simply because it would be a good idea, that's not proof. That simply emphasizes the assertion. This logic model goes into proof. So if you want to prove, you have two statements of proof. The first is called the warrant. The warrant is a principle, and it's general. Talk about both those terms. A principle is some kind of rule that could apply to a number of situations. General means it does not simply apply to smoking. It applies to a number of different circumstances. Think of your warrant as your value or your morality. What sort of morality are you invoking in this case? In this case, I'm talking about the United States government's mandate to protect the health of its citizens. Can you give me other examples where the United States government would step in to protect the health of citizens? Where the United States federal government would act in such a way to protect the health of citizens? I'm sorry? OK, do you know the, uh, the specific organization that is, um, <laughs> Zach, you're already shaking your head. No, 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 of course I do not. Um, that's correct. In the case of an epidemic, the federal government would step in with some sort of uh, measure to fight that epidemic. Anybody familiar with the organization, the office of the federal government that does that? The CDC, the Center for Disease Control. It's actually technically CDCP, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, but everybody just calls it the CDC. That's correct. So the CDC is one of the government's ways to fight epidemics and protect the health of its citizens. What I'm saying is that this I was 
cool, um, that this general principle applies to more than just smoking. So you need to write a general principle. When I'm writing this general principle, I can write it very simply. I can do these all days because it's actually a mathematical formula. Logic and math share a lot in common. And I'm just plugging in values, just like you would in an equation. Here's how I do it. I'm going to take a look at my claim. My claim has two of what I call terms. Anybody want to take a guess at what my first term is? It's kind of like my first variable. Zach? Uh, federal. federal government, that's correct. This is term one. Term one would be considered the responsible party. Term one is the responsible party. We talked about that responsible party yesterday. If you've written your claim proper, you, properly, you have a responsible party. Uh, Emma, do you have an idea for a claim? Your paper? You want to try to reconstruct it? Should. Excellent. State government should legalize gay marriage in Ohio, or the Ohio state government should legalize gay marriage. Um, Emma's responsible party is the Ohio state government. Uh, Emily, what's yours? Excellent. So uh, United States federal government, you might want to be careful because you've divided that, uh, that claim into two parts. And I'll talk about how it's divided into two parts and how to fix it in a moment. But you've got federal government. Um, let's see. Zach, what's yours? OK, George? Dakota. OK, great. That's wonderful. Um, moving into term two. If that's term one, United States federal government, then what might you think term two is? Illegalized smoking. Illegalizing smoking is term two. A term must be some sort of noun thing. United States federal government is a noun. It's a noun phrase. It refers to one entity. The illegalization of smoking is an action that's also considered to be a noun. So the United States federal government and the illegalization of smoking. I've got term one and term two. You can consider term two to be the action. So the claims divided very easily into two parts. One is the responsible party, and two is the action that you're asking them to do. Really simple. So uh, Emily, list yours for me again, please, your claim. OK, um, so you seem to have two actions. And that's what, uh, if you can so sort of um, merge those into one, then it'll be clearer for this model. Okay, And it might just be your first action is the one that you're talking about. Yeah. OK, good. Uh, da -da -da -da. Writing the warrant is pretty easy to start. What do you notice about the warrant in terms of these terms? If I can be more repetitive. Jordan? First is a repetition of term one. I always start my warrant with a repetition of term one. So with Emily's model, I already know the first part of her warrant. I don't even know where she's going with her argument. I already know the first part of the warrant. It's the United States federal government. What else do you notice about that warrant? It includes the word should. Thank you, Kim. So Emily's, I can once again, without even Entering Emily's brain, anticipate where she's arguing. The United States federal government should. Now, there's a third term. A Toolman model includes three terms. This third term, right here, protecting the health of US citizens, is what we might call our value. The thing we want. What do I want? I want to protect the health of US citizens. That's my motive. That's my value. That's my interest. And I'm saying the US federal government should do that. Emily, I'll go back to you again. Why would we end the Bush-era tax cuts? 
Excellent. So would you say that your warrant is something like the United States federal government should um, maintain the stability of the economy? Very good. That's, that's your second one. Should maintain the stability of the economy. Emily can argue this in multiple ways. Can anybody give me a different reason why we would end Bush era tax cuts besides maintaining the health of our economy? Oh, it's true. <laughs> Bush is not president. Um, however, uh, I think it would be a little bit odd if a president left and suddenly everything that he did was, was wiped off the table. Why, why else would we end Bush era tax cuts? There's no other reason. Because Emily's got to come up with two. Emily, do you have an idea? Bingo. So your second warrant, Emily, and you've got to do two of these for the assignment. So you've got to do two models. So your second warrant and your second model would be the United States federal government should tax citizens fairly. Emily has two ways of arguing her point. One is about fair taxation. The other one is about the health of the economy. The only thing that changes from one model to the next is term three. All right. Um, somebody tell me now what you noticed about the grounds. What's the formula? How did I write the grounds? Jordan? Three put together. Two and three put together with two leading. However, what do you notice is different in the final statement, the ground statement? There's no should. Very good. The claim is opinion. The warrant is opinion. The grounds are supposed to be evidence. They're supposed to be fact. Somewhere in your logic mix, you must have fact. You must have evidence. You must have concrete proof. And if you don't, it breaks down. If you've written the claim and the warrant, the grounds write itself. All you have to do is arrange the terms and plug in the variables. So here's, here's Emily's. The United States federal government should end Bush-era tax cuts. The United States federal government should maintain the health of the economy. Well, can somebody else do it? I know I can. United States Listen carefully. I know I'm doing it verbally. The United States federal government should end Bush-era tax cuts. That's my claim. The warrant. The United States federal government should maintain the health of the U.S. economy. And my grounds? Ending the Bush-era tax cuts would maintain the health of the economy. That's it. That's the model, and that's an outline of what Emily must do. And it places a burden on her for what to prove. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Kim, do you have a question? I'm sorry? No, there are three terms each repeated. So you could say it's six terms, but it's actually just three repeated. So three times two for the six. This is the beauty of the Toulmin model. It's a logically valid, ar valid argument, which means all the terms are in the right place. There are models, Venn diagrams, and other sorts of uh, logical proofs to verify that this is valid. But a valid argument works this way. If this is true, this statement, if that statement's true, and that statement's true, what logically follows? That the claim is true. So if I want to prove that my claim is true, what is my burden? To prove the warrant in the grounds. If I prove the warrant in the grounds, I've proved my claim. So if Emily goes in there and proves that the United States federal government has a burden to maintain the healthy economy, probably not a very difficult statement to prove. But she could appeal to the Constitution. She could talk about uh, the purpose of government. And she could prove that statement. And then on her grounds, she has an economic burden. She must prove that ending these tax cuts will help the economy. And that's probably where most of her work will fall. But if she proves that to be true, then the claim follows. If I'm countering her argument, what do I do? 
I attack the grounds or the warrant. I try to prove one of them false. I try counter evidence strategies that will prove one false. And that's a little anticipation because when we get to counter argument point, that's, we'll use the Toolman model to, to target that. All right. So let me, uh, oh, go ahead, Austin. I'll show you in a moment. Then you need a new general principle. What's your claim? Okay, so okay, so general health assistance protecting that um, is that. Where are you going with that? Because I'm not seeing how um, alternative energy connects to health. Are we talking about pollution? Okay, so you you've written a pollution argument that has a health warrant uh, that works. Can you think of any other reason we'd use alternative energy? Can anybody think of any other reason we use alternative energy besides reducing pollution? Jordan. Oil's going to run out. Oil's going to run out, and we need to maintain um, our standard of living, perhaps. Any other arguments? I can think of at least two more. Oh, excellent. Reduce the cost. Yeah, reduce the cost. Um, usually, if you're struggling for some sort of second argument or second warrant, look to money. Prove that yours will have a monetary benefit. Is that good, Austin? Yeah. OK. Um, the other one that I was considering is that a lot of people say we are involved in foreign military engagements because of fossil fuels. And my warrant would be something about protecting American lives. To review, go through this quickly. Oh, Dakota. It should be a general principle that will apply to your claim as well as other claims that you could envision. So like I'm saying here, um, if I have this warrant about the protect, protecting the health of citizens, then I could devise a claim that says U US federal government should um, provide immunizations. right? And that protects the health of citizens. I could say the US federal government should enact pollution restrictions. Okay, I could apply that warrant to a number of different claims. Should be able to do that. So, I start with the effective argument claim. Make sure that I've identified term A, and if you're looking at yours on your paper right now, just find your responsible party. If you have no responsible party or you cannot find it, then it's chances are pretty good that you haven't written this properly. By the way, while I review this, if anybody wants to check theirs, um, just raise your hand. Term B is your action. Remember that we are talking about claims of action, so try to determine what you're asking people to do. Jordan. Um, would mine be really wrong because uh, my claim to the United States would reduce interference with our ability to finish domestic and military affairs. Would uh, the action be pretty much if we didn't interference with the military Right. The, your second term will be um, the reduction or reducing interference with foreign nations, domestic, and military affairs. So we know. You sure? OK. So your warrant is another should statement. By the way, I'm sorry. Going through these, these are the, I, I placed these on here because I've taught the Toolman model to students for years. These are the places where I re remove points. So your homework assignment that I'll get into in a little bit will require you to write two Toolman models onto that document that you're posting on Google Docs. I'm going over the common places where I say, nope, you didn't follow the instructions there. You lose a point. So keep this in mind. If you have a responsible party, you have an action. That action is hopefully singular and unified. Jordan's worried that his is a little bit too long, but it seems to be a single action, so it's fine. Emily's concerned me a little bit because it seemed to be two actions rather than one. Your warrant must be a should statement as well. And term A leads it to repeat. Term C is your value. This is where your Toolman models will shift. So I am asking you to construct two Toolman models for Thursday. The only part of this model that would shift would be the value. So just find a different value as we were exploring with Austin's. And you should be able to find a number of them. And remember what I recommend. If you're struggling for a value, go to economics. Term C is repeated. 
sorry. Term B is repeated. B leads the grounds, C ends the grounds, and of course, that statement does not include the word should. We've seen Emily's in two different ways. Who wants to try theirs? Just start with the claim. Mm -hmm. I would condense them into one. See, with Emily's, it seemed that both actions were one action, repealing the Bush tax cuts. She was just elaborating on it. So for hers, I would just cut them down to the one action because it seems like she's just repeating herself. I could be wrong, but it seemed like it was just one action. For yours, what you must determine is whether or not those two actions are actually one, and you could characterize them as one. Um, if not, you'll have to cut one. OK, um, so you're talking about, I would say, yeah, technically you have two, reinforcing or um, enforcing and strengthening restrictions. OK, it's technically two, but we could call it one, enforcing and strengthening. You're calling for both, right? United States federal government should attempt to solve its economical and social crisis before aiding other countries. So, oh. Don't worry about it. No, not a big deal. Um, comments on the claim. Let's do claim proofing first. Well, I think Zoe's saying that it's not possible, probably, to solve the social crisis. So she's weakening it a little bit. But um, I agree that perhaps we want to strengthen this statement in this way. What kind of aid are you talking about? Are you talking about financial aid to other nations? Are you talking about us giving money? Are we talking about Japan? Are we talking about AIDS in Africa? What are we talking about? Okay. What I think you've got in here, you actually have the warrant in your claim as well. So you're merging the two. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take your claim and make it only the action and take the warrant. Your warrant's going to be a warrant of what? What's your value? Your, your C term is going to have something to do with? What is her C term going to have something to do with? Zoe's arguing for what value? What does she want? She wants financial health. She wants financial stability. So your warrant will be something about financial stability. You'll say something like this. that's the case, and we will take the economical and social crisis out of the claim, how will her claim read? The United States federal government should what? Should focus. That is, that is true, Jordan. However, I think that she's going um, not quite so positively. I think she's going more negatively against the aid for other nations. So I agree with you. And what I think you were doing, Jordan, was trying to take my rule that it be affirmative and keep it affirmative. However, I can make it negative without making a negative verb. And here's how I'm going to do it. United States federal government should United States federal government should end financial aid, or you might call it financial assistance, because financial aid makes me think like we're trying to put them through college um, to other nations. Is that, is that what you're calling for, Zoe? OK. I want to make sure that I'm not revising your ideas out of the shape that you intend. Uh, what's the grounds?
Zoe typed this, ending financial aid to other nations. Will maintain economic stability. Dakota. How so? Oh, do you want to soften it by saying will help? Okay. Ending financial aid will help. Go ahead and type help in there, Zoe. Does that seem a little bit more reasonable? I think possibly, and I understand where you're going with that, Dakota. You're saying it's really hard to prove that statement true because that's not the only thing that will solve the problem, right? All right. So I, I agree with you on that. Um, seems to work now. And when, I, when I'm asking, does it work, I'll check through it this way. Term A is here. It's a responsible party. It's repeated right here. I have should in both places. I have a clear action and nothing else. Zoe, I'm glad you threw up your claim because a lot of students will make mistakes by adding more information. Pair it down to only the responsible party and the action. So she has nothing else after we took that material out. She has a very clear value. Over here, I've joined the two, and we are not using a should verb. The basic plan of argument is intact. So that seems to work. Any other reason why we would end financial aid to other nations? Because you have to come up with two of these. Any other reasons besides economic? Emma? Excellent. So um, something about politically being involved with other nations being harmful. So if we become financially involved with somebody else, we might become politically involved with them. And especially when it comes to African nations that might be a little bit unstable, we don't want to be involved with unstable nations, politically, militarily, and so on. So you might think about how this doesn't just have an economic impact, it also has a military political impact. Okay. Probably have time for one more. Next, Emma. Go ahead, Jordan. Right, it should only be, it should only appear twice. It should not appear in your warrant. So if you see it in the warrant, you must take it out of there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Simple, right? And you can add detail about what that would take because, if I'm correct, it's now a constitutional amendment for the Ohio State Constitution, and I'm not sure what the legal process is of overturning that, but you can talk about that in detail. Um, warrant. Start my warrant. Taylor, start my warrant. Taylor, can you think of a reason why somebody would argue for this? Good. So we have a warrant of fairness. You're talking about civil liberties, right? So you want to spread, ci spread civil liberties to all people. Um, Ohio should. No.
excuse me. We're not doing this, and I'm not teaching it to you simply because it's a fun little mathematical tool. We're doing it because it plans your paper, and it plans your burdens. And your burdens meaning what research you must do, what you must write about, what you must prove. So in Emma's paper, what will she need to prove? What will she need to do? What will she need to write about? She's going to need to define that and explain what she means by civil liberties and especially explain how marriage is a civil liberty and uh, add some detail from other sources, perhaps the Ohio State Constitution itself, perhaps the U.S. Constitution, perhaps other people's writings on civil liberties and talk about how civil liberties are defined in our, um, in our society. Then what does she need to do? Come on, how do you attack this if, you, if you'll attack it, Emma? Oh, sure. Um, you could do that. So you're talking about analogies to other states that have done that. Um, however, I'm not sure. Those analogies might be illustrative on what will happen, but I don't think those analogies help me prove either of these two statements. And I, you're, you're getting really close to it, Jordan. Your idea is that um, people will say that uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, whatever, is not a protected type for civil liberties, whereas race, gender, ethnicity, and so on are protected types, age, and whatever. But they'll say that this is not a protected type. So what you need to do, here's what your grounds implies. Your grounds implies that Rights for gays are civil liberties. Rights for gay citizens are civil liberties. Some will, people will argue against you and say, uh-uh, no, that's not a protected class of people. Therefore, they do not deserve civil liberties based on that class. And that's a legal and political and sometimes moral argument as well. So what you need to do to prove this to be true is convince me that um, uh, this sexual preference is a class that should be protected at, um, for civil liberties. You can only prove this statement if you prove that to me. And now you're talking analogies. What would you make analogies to? What would you compare them to? You compare the struggle for gay rights to what other struggles? Correct. You compare it to prove it. Bingo. If you can say that the struggle for gay rights is the same as struggle for um, civil rights for different races or for rights for different genders, um, women's rights basically, if you can say it's the same sort of struggle, then you can prove to me that we should present that group with the same civil, li civil liberties. So. You're, you'll have to consider a second one as well. You could think about the economic impact. Um, you could take a look at Massachusetts, Hawaii, certain other states that have legalized it. I, I believe that Hawaii's motivation for legalizing um, gay marriage was economic in nature. Because if you legalize gay marriage, what will happen economically? People will move to your state. And the population of um, stable gay couples in the United States is sizable enough that you could have a pretty strong economic impact. So you can also argue this economically. And that could be your second. All right. Um, we'll talk more about the assignment tomorrow. It's not due until Thursday. Yes, Allie. Okay, we're going to have all day tomorrow to work on it. And since we're drawing close to the end of time here, let's just start with yours tomorrow. Okay? Thursday.